Hello and welcome to another episode of Be the Love to Awaken Our Souls. Thank you so much again for tuning in this week. I am Stacey Musial. And I am Brenda Carey. We are your co-hosts and souls on the journey. We are on a mission to raise the consciousness of humans and the planet, and we need your help. Please spread the word to your family and friends and join us every week. Consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a sponsor to help with the operating costs like editing and the many hours we spend creating these shows with quality guests and content. And if you have resonated with our mission, support us in a way that raises your vibration to love. And if it feels safe for you, I'd like to begin by inviting you to take a moment to get centered with us. I'd like to begin by inviting you to take a beautiful cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, releasing anything you're ready to release in this present moment. And take another deep breath in through your nose, breathing in peaceful, calm, loving energy and breathing out anything you're ready to release. And take one more breath in through your nose, breathing in light and love for yourself. And imagine breathing that light and love and send it back to all of humanity, remembering that you always, always have your breath to come back to. I am so looking forward to this sensitive yet I think important conversation around trauma, especially when we experience personal trauma, whether that's physical, mental, or emotional, and how it is all linked. And uh, Stacey and I are just hoping to have a sensitive conversation um, around this, I think, becoming more, more popular, bringing more awareness uh, to the subject. And we're going to start with just offering some clarity around trauma, because some of the people that I encounter with are a little unsure of like, what exactly does does it mean or what qualifies as trauma or not trauma? And I think people are just maybe a little confused. Uh, I'm starting with just a simple definition that I found online. And it says trauma is the response to a deeply distressing or disturbing event that overwhelms an individual's ability to cope, causes feelings of helplessness, diminishes their sense of self and their ability to feel the full range of emotions and experiences. And I know that seems like a pretty broad definition, but in this episode, we are intending to dive a little bit deeper into what truly is um, and a definition of trauma and just the different examples of both complex and acute trauma that there are. Mm -hmm. This is such a really important topic because I think there's so many people in this world that, you know, they have trauma and they, they don't recognize it as trauma or, you know, we think of trauma or, you know, the, the, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, as just related to, say, war veterans, because that's right. really historically where it, where it's stemmed from. And so, you know, but there's so many different types of trauma, you know, and, and it's really, it's not about, you know, what we would, like, what would one person say as a trauma versus another person, because it's really about how each individual perceives their situation or experience and how how their body responds to it and then how they're coping with that afterwards and so you know we can go into these responses they you know the fight flight freeze fawn responses and these are different um, ways our body is going to respond in the aftermath of a trauma and when we are experiencing a trauma, our body, you know, that that energy gets stored in the in the body and the nervous system. And and then we we try to cope with it in the best ways we can. But, you know, recognizing that there's different levels of trauma and different types of trauma. So somebody, you know, experiencing lifelong childhood abuse trauma that, you know, might lead to more of a complex trauma, 
you know, and then complex trauma is going to have, you know, a lot more issues involved with that. Um, and then we'll get into that. But um, and then there's acute trauma. So those might be things like the, you know, single, single event traumas like a car accident or things like that. But so it's really important to, you know, differentiate the differences and then the responses to each. And we'll get into that as well. Yeah, I liked how you gave the clarity around complex versus acute. And not that um, one that we're trying to label one more important or less important than the other, but just to bring an awareness around the different levels of it. And you had mentioned also the different issues or symptoms. And um, so when we talk about like physical, if we just were to look at physical symptoms, these could be things like actual physical pain in the body, it could also, also be like sleep patterns, uh, like insomnia that are altered. It could be even nausea, dizziness. Um, I can definitely speak to uh, digestive issues can be triggered by trauma, uh, even headaches, uh, changes in appetite. There's a lot of physical things that our body will speak to us, whether it's a soft speak or a like a loud yell <laughs> mm -hmm. to get to get us aware of something that we might be trying to process. Yeah, absolutely. And those are some, yeah, really, you know, those symptoms are pretty common and, and we wouldn't maybe link those symptoms to the trauma. But there's also, you know, I sleep, sleep is a big one too, because mm -hmm. insomnia, there's so many people that struggle with insomnia and are struggling to get a good night's rest. But when your brain is, you know, focused on the trauma and, or you might not even know it because you're, you know, maybe you're in freeze mode or that you feel like the trauma happened so long ago that it, it shouldn't be affecting you anymore, but that's typically not the case until you've truly healed that trauma. And so that could be continuing to impact things like sleep or digestion. Um, also the trouble focusing and concentrating. Mm -hmm. I find in my practice a lot that, you know, people will come in because um, I work with a lot of, with a lot of people with trauma um, and, and they'll come in with, you know, ADD is what they've been diagnosed with. Right. right. And, and, and they, but they never had any trouble maybe as a child or, or maybe unless it's like a childhood trauma and, and we, we will look at that, but, you know, the trauma really impacts how much we're concentrate, how much we can focus and concentrate. And so it might show up as ADD, you know, or adult ADD. Um, so that's something really to, to understand, but also this yeah. also overwhelming feeling of guilt or shame. There's this guilt shame cycle that can really happen with, you know, with, someone who experiences a lot of trauma or has experienced a lot of trauma, um, depending on what the, what they've experienced in, in their lifetime. So yeah. that's, and that links the, the emotional issues, you know, that can be associated with physical trauma and how they kind of link together. So you mentioned like guilt and shame, and there's also, you know, anger and sadness and um, denial and fear. Uh, there are so many different emotional sides of trauma that can affect the physical body and vice versa. It's almost hard to separate uh, the two at times. However, I, I do think that oftentimes one might catch our attention more. Like for me, I would have never said I felt like very anxious in my mind, but my gut told me. Like my gut was very loud. <laughs> and so the stomach issues, I think, were a very underlying, um, probably deep seated trauma, maybe from childhood, but it didn't necessarily come up as anxiousness or scatteredness. It came up in my in my digestive tract. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Mine, you know, I had to do a lot of work on my healing my gut, um, you know, several years ago when I, you know, was really working on healing my, my trauma and, you know, working on some of the autoimmunity, you know, that was a lot of the emotional stuff that I was, had been stuffing down for years. Yeah. And so it was showing up as, you know, autoimmunity, um, Hashimoto's, um, thyroid, and 
you know, as well as, you know, the, the leaky gut, but the leaky gut was really, it stems like, cause the health can really start and end in the gut. And so when we have a healthy gut, we can have a healthy immunity because there's so much going on in our gut biome. And, and so, and, and so if we have food sensitivities, you know, most likely that's linked, you know, to we, it's probably an indication that there's some gut dysbiosis in there happening sure. and leading and there, to. Yeah. And there could also be anxiety or like you mentioned, you know, ADD. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder, and, and I don't, because I'm not in Western medicine, but I wonder because Western medicine does tend to compartmentalize mm-hmm. all of the different diagnoses that that kind of spills over. Um, and so sometimes those links between the physical issues and the mental emotional issues aren't really seen as interconnected mm-hmm. uh, because our Western medicine system just doesn't view it in that way. Uh, Not all the time. I'm not saying that's true um, of every single professional or anything, but I think because there is that separation of diagnosis and it's just focusing in on like the one thing, uh, it it kind of leaves a little bit of questioning as to like, well, what about other possibilities of how certain symptoms get triggered? Absolutely. I mean, there, there's really, you know, we, we, we're working with a system that is so broken and, you know, we have, you know, the heart doctor and the kidney doctor and, you know, all of these doctors working separately and nobody's talking to each other. Right. And so, and then, you know, I start working with people, you know, on their mental health um, and we're working on the whole body because I can't see it separately because that's how Western medicine has you know, set it up is that the mind is separate from the body. But, you know, we're starting to see that when you start working on the emotional stuff, the physical symptoms start to uh, resolve themselves. And people start feeling better because they're, they're finally releasing all the stored emotions that they maybe didn't even know that they had under the surface. You know, I know for myself personally, you know, for the first 20 years of my life, 25 years of my life, I, I did not know my head and my body were attached. Like I didn't (laughs) feel it like, because I was so dissociated, you know, I was dissociated. I was like so numb in my body that I had to really experience the deep healing and going through the layers and letting myself feel what I hadn't, but hadn't felt in my entire life because I didn't know. And I had experienced all this trauma and I was walking around in freeze mode. And so my body was frozen and I was numb and I was just trying to cope with all these, you know, unhealthy ways to cope. I think the body just goes into survival mode, Mm -hmm. which I, I mean, you're not alone in how you felt. I mean, definitely as an adolescent, because I was in a back brace, because I had scoliosis, basically throughout my whole teenage years, I was literally in a plastic cage, Mm -hmm. like from my chest down to my hips. And I had to check out, I couldn't even breathe deeply. Mm -hmm. um, Because I I couldn't, it was like this plastic corset that kept everything firm, because they didn't want my spine to curve more and and progress. So it's like almost out of coping. Um, I had to disconnect from pretty much my chest all the way down to my hips during such formative years. Now, at that time, would I have known I was in trauma? No. You know, this was just a corrective procedure that the doctor recommended. Um, But years later, I didn't realize how trapped and how rigid I felt in my body and in my mind. Like it translates both ways. And once I kind of had awareness around that, I was like, oh my gosh, I like this, this stems from so many belief systems Mm -hmm. of during, during that period of time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know, like those belief systems of what's possible or maybe what we don't know that we don't know. There was, <laughs> there was so much I didn't know. And I was just given the tools that I had grown up with, sure. you know, and, and granted my parents did the best they could. Right. So sure. 
we all do. And, you know, but recognizing that I didn't, I didn't have all the tools. So it was up to me to like find the tools and recognize that there's another way, you know, because, you know, I think so many of us don't know how to heal, or maybe there's, there's a fear around that because what's underneath those feelings, like we're going to, you know, it's going to last forever, or there's going to be, you know, we're going to get, um, it's going to be worse and we're never going to get out of it. And there's all these like fears that come up for, for people. Sure. Fear of but, change, right? Okay. I mean, fear even of good change, um, because we're moving out of the familiar. And even though the familiar might actually be miserable, at least it's like, at least we know it. And yeah. we know what to expect and to shift out of that and, and evolve. That can be, that can be quite the journey for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it, we get stuck in these coping patterns, right? So like too mm -hmm. much alcohol, too much marijuana or sugar, cannabis. <laughs> I don't like the word marijuana anymore, <laughs> but uh, cannabis or um, <laughs> my, my go-to is like sugar, sugar, what? I mean, Shopping, um, <laughs> you know, all these things to like continue to stuff those emotions. Mm -hmm. And so when we stop those coping patterns, you know what happens? Those emotions start coming up to the surface. And it's like, because we've been, if you imagine like a beach ball underwater, we're pushing all those emotions down under the surface for so many years. And we're like corking it with all those coping mechanisms. And then when we stop, they start coming up. But that's the beautiful part of like being human is that we get to mm -hmm. now we get to feel what's coming up and we don't want to stop that that river flowing and sometimes it might take you know years to go through that because it's sure taking years to get there so we yeah. have to love and appreciate that process if we want to heal right from I yeah I think we forget how resilient our body and our minds really are. I, I really do believe that. I mean, after, you know, going through surgery trauma for me and autoimmunity and, and, you know, as well, like at the time I didn't think I could get through it, but with help and with tools that helped me shift my perspective, getting to a more flow type of state, our body and minds are really resilient. And I don't know if everyone gives themselves or their bodies and minds enough credit to see mm -hmm. that and to experience that. Yeah. And we truly can heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the capability and ability to heal from what is struggling. We don't have to walk around with this trauma anymore. We can let it go. We can, you know, but, but the only way out is through. That is the Thing. there's no getting over anything we have to move through it and so I just want to say too because we um there's different assessments that people can take if they're unsure if they're they have trauma or any kind of you know um where where, and where they are on the the spectrum I guess there's a because there's a there's spectrum of you know the level of trauma and and one of those is the um the ACE, um, the Adverse Childhood Experience Scale. And this is a really big one that, that more and more people are, are finally using, um, but it gives you a number. And so that number will indicate, um, you know, how, how high you are on, on the childhood trauma piece, because that childhood trauma piece can really indicate a lot of physical, there, there's research out, you know, research papers, how much the childhood experiences are impacting chronic health conditions today. And there, and it's just so prevalent right now from so many different um, autoimmune dis disorders and cancers and, you know, and, but when we can, when we can heal those, we can, we can begin to heal some of these chronic illnesses too. And yes. then there's, then there's the dissociative experience scale, which is a really great one. And it, it will show you, you know, there's a scale um, that in assessments that will ask you these questions about how, how do you feel in your body? Do you feel out of your body? Do you feel like you're walking around in a fog? You know, these are, these are things that we maybe have been doing for so long that it feels almost natural. And so to recognize how much of 
you are really dissociating from your body because when you're dissociating, you're not able to really think clearly. And, you know, that's where the, that's where the trauma lives, but that's also a defense mechanism because it's kept you safe because you've had to go out of your body because that being in your body was too painful. And so this is a beautiful assessment that will really help to uh, help you understand, like, where do I dissociate and how often and and so, and the other one is a trauma inventory assessment, which will help understand, like, do you, you know, are you able to feel a free range of emotions? Are you able to, you know, sleep free of nightmares, you know? And, and so that it goes through all these questions and it really, to help assess the, um, your trauma, trauma inventory and, and where you're at on that that awesome. scale. And I'm sure we'll put the links in the show notes for those different assessments if people want to try them mm-hmm. or yeah. fill them up. And I and I will just add a, a quick add on, you know, as someone is maybe exploring or diving a little bit deeper um, into this trauma work, uh, my encouragement is to not do it alone. Um, to really seek out the right kind of help it may not be your best friend or a family member. It might need to be somebody outside, kind of like the person who could be on the outside looking in and could have a more, you know, a bigger perspective or objective view of what's going on rather than maybe someone within a family or a best friend that knows us really well and might be a little bit biased in that way. For me, that was really a turning point when I received help that I didn't have to, and this is an old family pattern, I didn't have to pull myself up by my own bootstraps because that was, you know, the family mantra uh, in in my house because we didn't want to seem weak. We didn't seem want to seem like, oh, I need help that makes me less than or weaker than. And that's just not true. Again, old, old family beliefs that sneak in there that I for so long uh, was was not aware of. And so that's my encouragement to listeners like, receive help. Um, it makes the journey just, just first of all, I think quicker. And I, I'm not saying like overnight or anything, but less isolating so that we can do the deeper dive work um, more quickly than we could on our, on our own. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, Brenda, because that is a very important piece because, you know, and, and it has, it needs to be, if there's like trauma that you're struggling with, being with someone that can help support you that is trauma informed because if you're working with someone that is not trauma informed it can actually re-traumatize you Mm. and so that's something we have to be really careful about because also trauma when you start talking about your trauma brings it it up it can bring it up and it can re-traumatize you and re-trigger and then people are left feeling overwhelmed and they don't, of course, they're not going to want to go back and, you know, keep working on it because they, they had a bad experience and I've worked with many people um, in that situation. So we have to go move slow with trauma. And so, but you know, the um, one thing that can be helpful to begin working, um, on you know connecting with your body is really you know a body scan um so that's something that is important but that can also be traumatizing for people um so you know but a body scan is just really you know connecting with with the body and allowing your attention to move down your body and 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 just notice gently where your attention or where your the body sensations are. Yeah. And, and one of the tools that I love to do with a body scan is just like really deep, deep breathing. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, when I was in a back brace, my, my breathing was so shallow. I mean, it was forced to be, but even when I didn't have it anymore, I was still breathing. Actually I was reverse breathing, but super shallow. And that is just kind of agitating to the nervous system on a very low grade level. So when we really deep breathe, do a body scan, if that's comfortable uh, for you, it can just create so much calm within the nervous system. And to start slow, I think that's really important, you know, starting slow, because 
depending on the level of trauma, breath and body scan can be triggering for some people. And so it's just really important to start slow. And so maybe it's just starting with one part of the body to scan, you know, or taking one breath into that part of the body. Mm -hmm. Um, And it might not be the whole body. It just, and it might be just, you know, working on the layer that feels the resistance to that breath. And so, because the first thing that goes with trauma is the breath. And so that becomes very constricted. And so we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're paying attention to that. How often are you holding your breath and, and where are you feeling constricted? And, and that might be the first layer, but, but yeah. to find help within that space is really important before trying to do it on your own. If, if yeah. you have that level of trauma. Yeah, that was definitely a big awareness for me as I moved through that healing journey. And what a great way to wrap up this conversation. We are going to continue it in our next. But thank you for listening to Be The Love Podcast. And if you enjoyed listening to our show, please share the love by sharing it with your family and friends, giving us a five-star written review on iTunes and Spotify, or liking us on Facebook. And if you haven't heard, we are so, so excited to announce the Awaken Your Soul Costa Rica Retreat, November 6th through the 12th, 2023. We would love to have you join us for a beautiful and vibration-raising experience. Check out the webpage with details and registration in the show notes. And I am Brenda Carey, and as a holistic healer, I offer coaching and online programs to guide people in their sacred path to vibrant health. My website is sacredpathyogaandreiki.com. And I'm Stacey Musial. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in whole person, deep soul healing. You can find out more about my work, book, programs, and our retreat in Costa Rica at awakenyourempoweredsoul.com. Check out our links in the show notes. And please consider supporting our mission to awaken our souls with a monthly donation that helps us with the operating costs of this podcast so we can continue to spread the love. To contribute, visit our Patreon website at patreon.com forward slash be the love podcast and stay tuned for more episodes being released on Mondays at 5.55 a.m. Mountain Time.